ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवाय वॉट्स नेम इन द रिवर यमुना बट इन दिस सॉन्ग वी शुड सिंग यामुना थी रवन चाय बिकॉज इट्स हियर इट्स इन दजेक्टिव फॉर्म सो यमुना बिकम्स हियर यामुना मीन्स ऑफ द यमुना जस्ट लाइक पराशर His son is called Parashara. Means who? Who is Parashara? Vyasadev. Then we have Madva. Madva means Madva Acharya. But Madva Sampradaya. So like that. Yamuna Tiravana Acharya. <clears throat> Actually that example, Parashara, Parashara, that's not adjectable. But it, it means of, of Parashara like that. क्षीरंग यथा दधि विकार विशेष योगात संजायते व्हाट्स द नेक्स्ट वर्ड संजायते न हि तथा पृथगस्ति हेतो हो यह शंभुताम अपि तथा समुपाइति कार्यात गोविंदमादि पुरुषं तमहं वजामि इन दिस प्रेयर Lord Brahma who also describes himself in the same prayer worships Govinda the original person of whom Lord Shiva is a manifestation as indeed everything but everything and everyone but Govinda is a manifestation of Govinda The Lord Shiva is a manifestation but a very close manifestation. The example is given of yogurt which is a transformation of milk. Actually it's only milk. Yogurt is nothing but milk. But at the same time it's somewhat different. It acts differently to milk. So in the same way Lord Shiva is non different from Hari Hari Hara there are many temples of Shiva Hari is Vishnu and Hara Shiva combined form So we know that there is Vishnu tattva and jiva tattva and there's another shiva tattva which is said to be in between but practically lord shiva it's he's more vishnu than he's jiva he's neither he's not, he's not jiva he's actually vishnu in another form <clears throat> there are many statements in shastra that Shiva and Vishnu are the same they're never there we don't find any shastra that Shiva and Jiva are the same except some nonsensical jivas go around saying Shiva hum i'm shiva but they're not or they make some uh, rhyming then the jiva becomes shiva but lord shiva he's Vishnu in another form same as and different also of course the jiva is also same as vishnu and different from him also but in the case of lord shiva the sameness is more than in the case of the jiva he is well known as parameshwar mahadev which are all actually names of vishnu and these names are not inapplicable to lord shiva also however he is not parameshwar in the sense that krishna is parameshwar he is particularly parameshwar within devi dham in 
Brahma Samhita, from which the verse we just quoted, this material world is referred to as Devi Dham. The Devi Dham, Mahesh Dham, and Hari Dham are referred to therein. So within this material world, Devi, Durga, she has so many names also. Any important people, they have many names. So Lord Shiva has many names. His wife has many names. We don't have many names. <clears throat> so she is the boss here. She controls the household. The woman is the Griha Swamini. So the whole material world is Devi's household. But her, she is Ishvari within this material world. She's also known as Maheshwari, Mahadevi. She's commonly known as that. And Lord Shiva, she, he is her husband, so he's known as Parameshwar of Parameshwari. She's known as Parameshwari. Actually, Radha is Parameshwari. But Durga is a an expansion of her, of Radha. And within this material world, for persons whose vision does not go beyond Devi Dham, then for them, certainly they will see Parameshwari. They'll see in the ultimate sense. There's no one beyond Shiva and Parvati. And thus they worship them as supreme. Which is not incorrect. To, it's not incorrect to consider Shiva and Parvati as supreme. But it's not fully correct. Well, in another sense it's incorrect also. This may sound contradictory. Well, Shiva Tattva is apparently contradictory. Just like yogurt is contradictory, it seems. That it's milk, but you can't use it like milk. If you can't make this uh, payasam, dugda payasam, you can't make it from dadhi. It doesn't work. You can make uh, curd rice. It's very popular here, but Curd rice and rice cooked in milk, it's, it's a different product altogether. Both are very tasty, no doubt. And healthy in moderate quantities. Actually, you can take more curd rice than rice cooked in milk. Uh, but they're different. So Lord Shiva is very mysterious. His name is Shiva, which means auspicious. But it seems that everything he does is inauspicious. He's, he associate, he's, uh, associates with the, he's known as Bhutanath, Pashupati, the Lord of the ghosts, the Lord of the animals. Of course, Krishna, he's also known as Pashupati. But they, again, all these names of Lord Shiva, they're all names of Krishna, actually, but they just have to be understood in context. Or rather, all the names of that are used by Shiva, they're actually, he's borrowing attributes from Krishna, or endowed with attributes from Krishna. No one is independent of Krishna. Ekali Ishvara. Krishna, Arasabha Bhritta. There is only one actual controller and all others are, that is Krishna, and all others are his servants. So Lord Shiva is very mysterious. He doesn't look auspicious. He's covered in ashes from the samshan, the burning ghat, smashan. And uh, he has a garland of skulls. That's not very auspicious. It doesn't seem to be very auspicious. Uh, 
Well, for anyone else, that would render them inauspicious. But Lord Shiva has a very unusual purpose to perform, which is to uplift the people of this material world. He's known as Pashupati. Everyone in this material world is Shvavidvara Hostra. Shvavidvara Hostra Karai. Everyone in this material world is uh, likened to a dog, a pig, a camel, or an ass. Because uh, they do not worship Krishna. They don't glorify Krishna. So his job is to uplift them and especially to uplift those who are in the Tamagun, which is... In Tamagun it's practically... How can you uplift such people? They're, they're dedicated to darkness and ignorance. But Lord Shiva's task is to uplift them. So that's very auspicious to have such a service. But he has to deal with many inauspicious people. So he he may appear to be inauspicious, but his name is Shiva. He's he's auspicious. Lord Vishnu is Sada Shiva, which means always auspicious. He does. Lord Shiva sometimes we well we hear about his various activities, destroying the material world, destruction. That is also. Uh, in this material world, destruction, this just like wanton violence, one of the symptoms of Kali Yoga mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Vridha Hingsa. Just meaningless violence. In the Western countries, that's quite common. People who are called vandals, they just go and smash something up for no reason. They'll just break a car to pieces. Of course, in India it's quite common, but It'll be in protest. We want Telangana or something like this. There's some kind of reason, however cuckoo the reason may be. Whoops, I might get beaten up by the Telangana Vadis for saying that. But uh, there's some kind of reason. But in the West there are people... It's quite common, especially in what are supposed to be the most prestigious countries of the world, the, like England and uh, especially, I think especially in England, they're the most uh, vandal. They're people who they just, just gangs usually of young men who go around and they'll smash up cars or houses for no reason, just for fun. They find it pleasurable. So this, this meaningless violence or destruction, that is a symptom of tamagun, the mode of ignorance. The, the mode of ignorance manifests in two principal ways. One is inertia, lethargy. Who's translating? You know all these words, what they mean? I hope you know. Inertia means like stubbed, not just... You can lie down 24 hours a day and just... Literally means non-movement. Lethargy means a state of laziness procrastination there's another big long word for you it means always putting things off just not you have work to do oh, I'll do it later I'll do it later I'll do it later this tamagun so that's one manifestation of tamagun another manifestation is uh, just uncontrolled anger and and uh, extremely nasty violence and causing harm to others, taking pleasure in others, giving pain to others and taking pleasure in it. This is a, this is another. It's another manifestation. It's a more active manifestation. But active, but not in Rajagun, but in, this is Tamagun. So Lord Shiva's destruction of the material world appears to be tamasic, destruction. Actually it's not. He is known as the overseer of Tamagun, but he is not tamasic. He's not influenced by Tamagun, although it, it may appear 
that he is so. Therefore, Jiva Goswami in his Sandarbhas states that both Shiva Tattva and Guru Tattva these are both very difficult to understand because both of them are in one sense Vishnu. Sakshad, Harit, Vena, Samastha, Shastra, Ukta. All the Shastras say that the Guru is God. He is Hari directly. But there's difference also. And it's just a matter of how of one's perspective. Acharyam mang vijaniyam navamanyeta karhichit Lord Krishna tells Uddhava that you should see the Acharya as me and never disrespect him in any way. So it's difficult to understand when you see well he walks, he talks, he sleeps, eats, looks like an ordinary person to me. But Krishna says, no. He is God in human form. So Lord Shiva also, he is Vishnu. There's difference also. If we only emphasize the oneness of Guru with Vishnu or Shiva with Vishnu, that is a misunderstanding. But on the other hand, if we think that he's any less, that's also a misunderstanding. So the, these two points are difficult to understand. They cannot be understood by mundane logic. We pray in the Ma'ong Vishnu Padaya. So Vishnu Pada, this means who is at the lotus feet of Vishnu, but it also means one who is on the same platform as Vishnu. One who's of the same status. So it's very difficult to understand. It's, it's not uh, understandable by mundane logic. Lord Shiva is non-different from Vishnu. <coughs> Difference is there. He appears to be uh, affected by Tamagun. But we should understand that He's not actually affected, even though he may become very angry, which appears to be uh, a symptom of tamagun. We actually find that in Bhagavatam, the description of Bhrigu Muni, Brig Muni wanting to resolve the question, who is supreme among the three murti? We often hear this in Hinduism. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, the Holy Trinity. In, I think in Catholicism, I don't know if it's in Greek Orthodox, is it in, in Russian Orthodox? Do you know they have that, the Holy Trinity? They have that also, maybe in the Protestant speculation also. They have the Holy Trinity. So in Hinduism, they have Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Different. So who is supreme? Bhrigu Muni went to test. First of all, Lord Shiva. And <coughs> he insulted Lord Shiva. When Lord Shiva came to embrace him. Oh, you're my brother. Because they're both mind-born sons of Brahma. Brahma. So, Bhrigu said, hey, 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 don't touch me. I've got all these ashes from the burning place on the body. You know, keep away. And Shiva became very upset. He wanted to kill Bhrigu. So, Fortunately, uh, Durga restrained him, restrained Lord Shiva and said, hey, 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 just calm down. 
So Lord Shiva, the Brigu Samai, is this in Tamagun because he became so angry that he wanted to immediately became so angry that he wanted to kill Brigu so that he surmised that he was influenced by Tamago. And Brahma, because Brigu, when he went to see Brahma, he failed to offer respect. Uh, he didn't bow down to him. So Brahma, he also became angry, but he restrained himself. But when he made the, the, the greatest insult to Lord Vishnu by placing his foot Bhagavad's foot upon the chest of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu not only was not upset, but he apologized to Bhagavad that I hope you didn't hurt your foot by placing it on my chest. I'm very fortunate to have your foot on my chest. So in this way, Vishnu, he demonstrated the uh, proper behavior for a Vaishnava. And Bhagavad uh, surmised that he must be of sattva So, So, uh, Actually, of course, Vishnu, he's not sattvic. He's, he's beyond that, even beyond sattva But in this world, he executes the function of overseeing sattva He takes that function. He has nothing to do. Namam karmani limpanti. Lord Vishnu has uh, nothing to do. But he takes that role out of his kindness. So Lord Shiva, as the uh, order carrier of Vishnu, he uh, takes charge of Tamagun and the acts of destruction. And he appears to be influenced like that. There are other, other examples also. How uh, when, when Daksha, due to his uh, improper behavior, he, uh, specifically because of his insults to Lord Shiva, he caused his daughter, Sati, to commit Sati. She considered, well, it's called Sati now, but there wasn't a well, that means she, she burned herself in fire considering that she didn't want to retain a body which had been born from such an offender to Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva became so angry on hearing this. He didn't personally go, but he sent his henchmen to uh, destroy the Daksha Yagya. So that's a saying I don't know in Telugu, possibly, but at least in Bengali, they'll say, Dokka Jogga. Have you heard that? People say that means some big... People are arguing and fighting and beating each other. And that's, it's called Daksha Yagya. It's going on. I don't know, in modern Bengali, they may not say, Gondagal, they just say, simple word. Previously, everything people would say would be somehow connected with Shastra. So Lord Shiva appears to be influenced by Tamagun. Therefore, he's known as Shiva, auspicious, and uh, no, not therefore, but therefore Vishnu is called Sadashiva, always auspicious, because there's no sign of any inauspiciousness within his personality but properly understood there's no inauspiciousness in Shiva's personality but it appears like that it appears like that to us he's a great personality we uh, offer him all respect uh, in two ways he's a great personality one is that he is uh, a ma we we say devata or he's a major devata overseeing this material world but he's he's not in the same category as others like young brahma 
Narunendra, Maruta. He's not in the same category. I left out the word Rudra there because Rudra means Shiva. Although Rudras there are expansions of Rudra, expansions of Shiva who, be, who are also known as Rudra. So Shiva Tattva, it's a, it's a complex subject. Jiva can become Shiva in one sense. It can become a Rudra or a sub-Shiva. So this all requires some research to understand all these points. Who is Lord Shiva? Some Shastric research is required. That should be done in the Vaishnav manner, through the Vaishnav Acharyas, because it's uh, it, it may be misunderstood by people whose vision is material. They understand Shiva to be supreme. In fact, in Shiva Puran it states that Shiva is supreme, and Vishnu and Brahma are subordinate to him. There's the well-known story of Vishnu and Brahma arguing over themselves who is supreme, Vishnu claiming himself to be supreme, and Brahma claiming himself to be supreme. And then Lord Shiva manifested a linga, and Brahma went up to find the upper limit, and Vishnu went down to find the lower limit, and neither of them could find it. So then they concluded that Shiva is supreme. So this is a, a well-known story. At least Shaivas like to tell that story. It's in Shastra. Now you're going to get really confused, aren't you? Then we should stick to Srimad Bhagavatam and not tell these stories. So so many narrations are there. And Shaivas take these to be the uh, ultimate. Therefore we have to understand Lord Shiva not through the so-called Shaiva Siddhanta. The, those who praise Shiva as supreme, they're followers of what is called Shaiva Siddhanta. And there are various branches of that. All over India, from Kashmir there used to be, a famous place of Shaiva Dharma. And uh, in Tamil, all the way through, everywhere in India we'll find Shiva temple. Here in Andhra there's so many famous Shiva temples. Sri Sailam is maybe the most famous. There's, there's a, Amaravati, is that that one place? I, I visited there. There's a huge Shiva Linga. What's it called? Near yeah, near Gunta. Huge Shiva Linga. The uh, Pujari has to climb up a ladder to do the Abhisheka. What other famous Shiva temples? Oh, Shikala Hasti. Yeah. That's one of the... Uh, which one is that? That's the Akash Linga, is it? Jyotir Linga. Yeah. Sri Sailam, I said. Yeah. No, I'm saying in Andhra, particularly in Andhra. In Andhra. Hmm? I, I hadn't heard of that. Where is that? Oh, that's another... Is that where they have the uh, Kumbha Mela, the, the Andhra equivalent? No. See, there's so much culture in there, all of India. So the, anyway, the Shiva culture is there all over India. Everywhere we'll find so many places uh, dedicated to Lord Shiva. In Tamil Nadu, there's the... the yeah, there's so many places in, in Tamil Nadu. Not only, not only Rameshram, so many. The Chidambaram and this... Uh, Tiruvannamalai, there's a huge Shiva temple. Chid, uh, Chidambaram, I said. Uh, Madurai, uh, actually, that's uh, that's a Devi, Devi Mandir, that uh, Meenakshi. But there's also Sundaresha. Is the, somehow or other, it's known as Meenakshi temple. So there's so many temples. Of, actually, if you go, especially in that area, in the uh, where the Kaveri flows, that whole area, there's so many. Vaishnav temples and Shiva temples also. Every village practically has a huge temple. And the, yeah, the uh, the people who consider themselves pure Tamils, who consider that Tamil is the original language and Sanskrit and all other languages came from Tamil. So they consider Shaiva Siddhanta to be the actual Tamil religion. They don't accept the Vedas. They accept the sh <coughs> Shaiva Agamas. 
They don't accept the Vedas, the Puranas, or any of these things. So, yeah, there's, uh, it can be very confusing, but we accept Srimad Bhagavatam as the Srimad Bhagavatam Purana Mamalam, because in this Srimad Bhagavatam, there's no mundane dharma, artha, kama, or moksha. These are not recommended. All through the Vedic literature, they're recommended, and at the end, dharma, projita, kaitava, atra. Here, these are all rejected. So we understand the personality of Shiva through the Bhagavatam and through the Acharyas, because we can't understand that even the Vaishnava Shastras or those that are particularly meant for Vaishnavas among which Srimad Bhagavatam is the definitive Shastra. Uh, if we just read it without commentaries it will be very difficult to understand. If we read about the episode of Mahini Murti and how Lord Shiva is bewildered then uh, how will we understand this without a Vaishnav commentary? You'll think that Lord Shiva is just some lusty person like us. So, yeah, we have to understand through the Vaishnav commentaries. Therein it's famously said, in Srimad Bhagavatam it's stated, Vaishnavanam yatha shambhu, which Srila Prabhupada always translates as, Lord Shiva is the topmost Vaishnav. Allah, if the literal meaning, how does that verse go? Nimnaga nam yatha ganga. Then what's the next one? Nimnaga. Devana machuto yatha. Vaishnavanam yatha shambhu. Purana nam idam tatha. Just as among rivers, just as the position of Srimad Bhagavatam among the Puranas <coughs> is like that of Ganga among rivers, of Achuta among Devas, and among Sh- and of Shiva among the Vaishnavas. In other words, it's supreme. <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is this supreme. Purana. Ganga is the supreme river. Achuta, Hari, Vishnu, Krishna is the supreme among all the gods. And among the Vaishnavas, Lord Shiva is supreme. So sometimes it's asked, why is. And last is the Bhagavatam, is the, it is the last. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, Purananam idam yata. Idam here it, it means Bhagavatam. Yeah, this this Bhagavatam. You'll find you can see in Bhagavatam. You can look at it. It's in the, which twelfth canto, very near, almost at the end of the Bhagavatam. There are other. What's that also among the Tirtas, Kashi? That is supreme. So sometimes that's asked, and why uh, we, 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 we generally hear that Rajavasis are supreme. And in Bhagavatam itself, Lord Krishna states to Uddhava that my topmost devotees are the gopis of Vrindavan. He himself states that. And, Lord, aha, and we also find in that state, in, when Lord Krishna is speaking to Uddhava, he says, uh, what is that? Name Priyataram, what is that? Uh, no, 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 no. Nahang, Nahang Pakash. No, no. What, no. what is that verse? Uh, he said uh, he mentions Lord Shiva also. Nahi Priyatam. Uh, I'm just forgetting it. It's a well-known verse. Natata me Priyatama Atna Yoni Na Shankaraha. He says that uh, Lord Krishna says to Uddhava. That uh, he mentions all people who are dear to him. That uh, not as dear to me as Brahma, who is Atmayoni, born from my womb, 
or Shankara, Lord Shiva, who is very dear to me. Natata me priyatama atma yone na shankaraha nacha sankarsano na shriya nor sankarsha, Lord Balaram, nor Sri Lakshmi. None of them are as dear to me. Naivatma, not even myself is as dear to me. Naivatma cha yatha bhavan, as you, Uddhava, you are more dear to me than all of these, and you are more dear to me than even me myself. So Krishna establishes Uddhava's position above that of Shankara. So how is it to be understood that Lord Shiva is mentioned as the Supreme Vaishnava? Well, it's it's true. Again, it's true. It's not untrue. But it's it may be seen contextually also. Just like to say that Shiva is Parameshwar, no one is superior to him, that's true within a certain context. Within this material world, Lord Vishnu, he, apparently he gives more power to Lord Shiva than he does, than he exhibits himself. So, in one sense it's true, Lord Shiva is Parameshwar. He is Mahadev. He is the great God. Although this name is, is more properly applied to Lord Vishnu, but within the context of this material world, it's also true. Shankara, what does that name mean? He who makes auspiciousness. He's not only Shiva, but he makes auspiciousness for others. So how is that possible? He makes auspiciousness for others when he's got the ashes from the crematorium. He's always, uh, he's always absorbed in thought of Krishna. The ashes from the crematorium, that cannot pollute him. Sarva Vasta Kato Piva Yasmaret Pundari Karksham Sabha Yabhyantara Shuchihi Pavitram Apavitram Va. So Lord Shiva, he doesn't require any external purification. He's always pure. Because he's always thinking of Lord Vishnu. Apart from that, uh, Mahadeva Pancha Mukhe, Rama Rama Hari Hari, with his five heads, often he exhibits five heads. He's chanting Rama Rama, Rama Rama. Rama Rama Eti Rama Eti, Rame Rama, Ramano Rame. Sahasranama Tulya Bhis, Rama Nama Varanane. He also says <coughs> to Lord, to, uh, Devi, Varanana, beautiful faced Durga, that I get such pleasure, I get such pleasure, he says, from chanting the name of Rama, it's such bliss, equivalent to a thousand names of Lord Vishnu, is one name of Lord Rama. So this way he makes auspiciousness for others by chanting Rama Nama. People go to Varanasi to die. It's considered the best insurance policy. (laughs) Do whatever you like in your life, but make sure you, at the end you go to Varanasi and die there. Because if you die there, you get moksha. So, it's true. If you die, whatever you've done in your life, you go to Varanasi and die there, your Lord Shiva will come and whisper. How is that possible? By the mercy of Lord Shiva, he's Vishwanath, he's the presiding, Kashinath, the presiding deity. He's Vishwanath, or the Lord of the universe, but particularly known as Kashinath, the Lord of Kashidham. He awards liberation. How? He doesn't, personally he cannot give liberation, but anyone who's dying there, he goes and whispers in his ear, Rama, Rama. And in this way the person gets liberated from this world. So Lord Shiva, yeah, he's 
the greatest Vaishnava within a context, just like Nimnaganam Yata Ganga. The Ganga is the greatest of rivers. Generally, people know the Ganga is greatest of rivers. Of course, if we go a little more deeply, we'll find the Yamuna is even greater. But Ganga is generally considered the greatest. She's, uh, when Yamuna and Ganga merge, then the river is known as Ganga, not Yamuna. <laughs> so, it's just like, uh, it's something like Narayana and Krishna. Some people say Narayana is the supreme form, not Krishna. They're right. Did you hear that? They're right. Narayana is the supreme form, not Krishna. They're right from one perspective. If, if we look from the perspective of manifestation of opulence and power in terms of godness or what what gen is generally considered to make one god Narayana is supreme but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, estimation is Madhurja Bhagavata Sa the essence of godness or what makes god god is his sweetness so then Krishna is supreme. It's a matter of tattva vichar or rasa vichar. If we see from the purely philosophical perspective, Narayana is supreme. Maybe. We don't agree with that either. But it's acceptable to say that. It's one perspective. From, from the perspective of rasa, Krishna is supreme. So Ganga is supreme, Yamuna is supreme among rivers. Yamuna is supreme because Krishna has his pastimes there. And Ganga, she's supreme. That's also another name of Lord Shiva, Ganga Dha, Gangeshwara, who holds Ganga on his head, who controls Ganga. No one else can control her. See, Lord Vishnu wasn't asked to do that. Lord Shiva was asked to do that. Only he could do that. Hold the force of the Ganga coming down. Of course, <coughs> Ganga is flowing through Mayapur also as Bhagirati. So the whole Leela of bringing Ganga to earth is actually just the real point which most people have no idea about is to facilitate the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Ganga in this way becomes most auspicious. She's coming from the feet of Lord Vishnu. She goes on the head of Lord Shiva. He holds the water coming from Vishnu's feet on his head. And then goes to all the Tirtas and Lord so many, everywhere on the bank of the Ganga is a Tirtha, but some places are especially known as Tirthas. And then in Navadvip, just before she enters the sea, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu plays in her waters. All the Tirthas come to offer their service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All the Tirthas along the Ganga. So in this way, Ganga is considered supreme among rivers. But the, if one has more inside, they will see Yamuna as supreme. But then again, Ganga becomes supreme by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's hidden, hidden understanding. So in the same way, uh, Lord Shiva is supreme. He is Param. <coughs> Vaishnavana Yata Shambhu. But in spiritual, in the realm of spiritual reality, there's supreme and there's something more also. More and more. So in the same way, Srimad Bhagavatam is supreme among the Puranas. But then, uh, very secretly, the Gorya Vaishnavas, they may find the essence of the Bhagavatam in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, Chaitanya Charitamrita. 
or other works of the Goswamis which are non-different from the Bhagavatam the uh, Gita Govinda Govinda Lila Amrita they may be even more essential Ujvala Nila Mani they may be even more essential than Bhagavata although again it's very secret topics the very gist of the Bhagavatam what the whole Bhagavatam leads to is is the topics which are given by the Goswamis so uh, Lord Shiva is the supreme Vaishnava but there is more supreme also and that doesn't mean he's any less there's no material distinction all the, all the devotees are very dear to Krishna Lord Shiva is the most influential person in the world today Tamagun is very strong. As Shankara Acharya, his name is not well known outside of India. And quite like, I, I almost certainly most, and there's no doubt about it, I mean almost every Indian today has a much better idea about the uh, name, form, pastimes and qualities of Sachin Tendulkar than of Shankara Acharya. <laughs> There, there may be very few who are not in that category. By the grace of Shankara Acharya, people have become materialistic. But his influence is actually more. Sachin is going to be finished. How, how many is going on and on? It's time for him to retire, isn't it? But uh, he'll be when he's finished, then no, everyone will forget. Then there'll be someone else. But, and even they may forget the name of Shankara Acharya, but his influence is very powerful by having promoted this uh, Mayavadam Asat Chastram, this Asat Shastra, or the, his commentaries on Shastra and his own original works, like Vivek Churamani, in which he establishes. Jiva and Ishvara to be the same, which is most inauspicious. But the influence of that has been very powerful throughout, it's still throughout the world. This, uh, this misconception which the Jivas love to think of themselves. Ishvara hamaham bhogi. I am God, I am the enjoyer. I am the controller. I am the enjoyer. So Shankara gave a philosophy to that, which, especially in recent years, has been even that, uh, which was bad enough, has been taken out of context by people who call themselves neo Vedantists. They took all the philosophy and all the restrictions out of it and just made it. Jatoma Tatopat, they call it. All the paths are the same. It's not what Shankara taught. <coughs> and so in the modern age we have you know, all kinds of ridiculous people claiming themselves to be gurus and so many Bhagavans and so many so-called avatars is neo vedanta yeah. as it's the the final rotten fruit of this advaita vedanta so his influence has been very powerful in uh, spreading tamagun in apparently in the form of sattvagun this uh, shankaracharya's influence very very powerful for giving people wrong information as to the Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojan. The, 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 the relationship, method of acting or method of approach and 
ultimate goal or if, if, and in, in a Veda body it's all, it's all mixed up it's all the same <coughs> Drashta, Darshan, Drisha, the seer, the seen, the, the act of seeing. It's all, it's all the thing. Gyan, Gyata, Gyaya, knowledge, the object of knowledge and the knower. It's all the same according to them. So, which is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. But that's Tamagun. Tamagun means that What is that? Tamotva jnana jang vidhi. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna states that from tamagun, tamaguna, actually, I should say tamaguna, is more correct pronunciation. The, uh, from that comes ignorance. So the whole material world is the place of ignorance. Lord Shiva is overseeing that. And this, this Mayavad or Kevaladvaitavad in its various manifestations uh, increases the ignorance of which is the, the Tamaguna, which is uh, particularly prominent in Kali Yoga. So Shankaracharya came to propagate that. So he's very powerful. So we can pray to him for his mercy to be free of this misconception. Vaishnavas, they may perform Shivratri Vrata, fasting, staying awake all night. It's mentioned in Hari Bhakti Vilas, the guidebook for all Vaishnavas. Interestingly, Radhashtami is not mentioned here. Shivratri is mentioned, but it's optional for Vaishnavas, and mostly uh, in Gorya Sampradaya. Uh, well, it's, it may, according to different uh, Gor- some Goryas may follow that also, but generally we don't see it's followed. And, uh, generally, all Hindus, pious Hindus, they'll f- follow this Vrata, but. The, they don't know why they should please Lord Shiva. They have a misconception of who he is. <coughs> so it may be followed. Uh, it's not compulsory. Vaishnavas, they see Lord Shiva in a different way to the way that general Hindus do. They see him as a dispenser of mundane boons. But Vaishnavas see him as a great Vaishnava to be worshipped. So I'll finish there. If anyone has any questions, it's a difficult topic to understand Lord Shiva. Yeah, what's your question, please? Uh, Hare the question is, um, what significance of the Shiva Linga when we have information from the Shastra about the person's form? We have information of the form of Shiva. Yeah, Shiva. why is Shiva Linga worshipped? Well, that's his uh, function in the material world, isn't it? That we find. Aham uh, bija prada pita. That's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, I am the seed giving father of all living beings. The Acharyas comment that actually this is Lord Shiva, his function. He's actually, Krishna states, I do this, but he does that. He is the seed giving father of all living beings. But that's actually Lord Shiva from his. Uh, copulation with Parvati comes this uh, come all living beings so he's worshipped as the father Um, Vaishnavas may also worship this form but we find that in uh, Goryamat temples where there are deities of Lord Shiva there are some here and there uh, they're mostly in the form of a deity of Lord Shiva. Now in the Jogpit in Mayapur we'll find there are two Shiva Lingas there. They were established by Bhaktivinoda Thakur at the birthplace of Nimai. They were established there in in much the same way as we have uh, Dhameshwar Mahadev, Chakleshwar 
Bhuteshwar. There's one other, there's four in Braja, the, the linga forms of Lord Shiva who are worshipped by Vaishnavas. They'll, they'll come and uh, worship Lord Shiva in that form. So that is his specific function within this material world. So we see the, the linga and the yoni. Although, uh, as someone pointed that out to me recently, it's not really, it's known, it's understood, but, it, and, uh, but most Hindus won't talk about it. They, they don't discuss it. They don't consider it obscene. It's only uh, Christians or someone, they'll consider it obscene. But Lord, Lord Shiva's linga is worshipable. Again, Shiva Tattva is very difficult to understand. We don't worship Krishna's linga. We never discuss it. We presume he has, he's not uh, asexual. Adi Rasa is Krishna. Coming from Krishna. But, yeah, these things are not discussed much. Yeah, what else? <coughs> Yes, please. Maharaj, this, this, you know, in the Bhagavatam, Brahma gets angry on uh, Narada and from the anger, nine Rudras came up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so is I, the birth of Rudra. Rudra so means anger. Get, yeah, I always get confused. The Shiva is the combination of these nine Rudras? Or the combination or of the nine Rudras. Well, as I was saying, there, there, are, there are various Rudras. Lord Shiva is also known as Rudra. But there are also other forms. There are many forms of Rudra. There, there, there are many, many. It's mentioned in Bhagavatam or something. There are 60,000 forms of Rudra. So they, they may be Jiva forms also. And uh, the Rudras who are born from Lord Brahma are non-different from Lord Shiva. But all still... All the nine. They're non-different in one sense, but in the, at the same time, there's the original form of Lord Shiva. He expands himself in every universe in the material world. But he has his own original abode. Just like there's a, there's a, there's a Vraja Mandal in every universe. But still there's Krishna's original abode. Golok. So in the same way, Lord Shiva in his original form is in Kailas, which is not the inner portion of this spiritual world, but it's also not the material world. It's also not the ultimate destination of the jiva. It requires more research. The whole time, I like so many things. You'll hear me say this word, research. Practically every time I open my mouth, I say this word. So much is required. It's it's uh, it's difficult, and the, the the difficulty is complicated by the different uh, perspectives on Lord Shiva of different. Acharyas, uh, just like in the uh, Ramanuja Sampradaya, they want, I mean, they're, they're against, they're, they're so much against any worship of any, of any god than Vishnu, that there's, Ramanuja himself, I believe, gave the instruction that you should never enter a temple of Shiva or any form, even to, never, in, never enter, even to save yourself from a tiger. Better get eaten by the tiger. Don't go inside. Don't ever go inside that temple. There's so much against it. Whereas in the uh, Madhva Sampradaya, they worship so many demigods, including Lord Shiva. They're, 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 they have no... They, they're pure Vaishnavas. And they, they know Vishnu is supreme, but... They worship the demigods as representatives. And then again, we have like this, the, the Shaivas with their completely different perspective. They see Shiva as supreme in all respects. So, yeah, it is complex, difficult. Difficult. Topic. But we don't have to get confused by all the difficult, all the subtle implications. If we don't understand all the... I, then, if we don't understand everything about Lord Shiva, that is in one res in one respect uh, 
a further vindication of his glory. He's so difficult to understand. But we bow down and we pray for his mercy. Please bless us with bhakti to Krishna. Thank you so much. Maharaj, what, what is the actual significance of Shivaratri? What, I mean, like we know Janmashtami. Yeah, what is it? It's, is it his marriage day, is it? Or is his <coughs> birth? Who knows? Marriage day, yeah. Marriage. Yeah, Shiva and Parvati. Marriage. Yeah. What is the difference between Guru Tattva and Shiva Tattva? What is the difference between Guru Tattva and Shiva Tattva? Well, yeah, it's the, what's the difference between apples and oranges? <laughs> There's a lot of difference, isn't there? I mean, they're both fruit, but there's a lot of difference. I mean, if you can't see that there's a difference, uh, you better go back to the uh, kindergarten. If you don't know, I mean, they're manifestly different, aren't they? I mean, you don't expect a guru to you know, have a tree shul and uh, <laughs> have not you know, have the Ganga on his head and the moon and, uh, okay what's your question oh that's another point saying about the moon and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a whole big culture there's practically just like there's Vaishnav culture and so many narrations about Vishnu Krishna there's so much about Lord Shiva also yeah Lord Shiva has some time to lie down to pacify mother. Well, in Bengal especially, you'll see that that uh, you'll see pictures of Kali trampling over Lord Shiva. She's in such an angry mood that Shiva tries to pacify her by lying down in front of her, hoping that she, when she sees him, she'll cool down. But she doesn't. She just tramples all over him. Uh, that's maybe in Shastra, I don't know. but no, Especially in Bengal. In India, you see that also, yeah. It's it's very popular in Bengal, where there are so many Kalibaris or temples, especially in Bengal. Jekane Bengali, Shekane Kalibari. Wherever there's a Bengali, there's a temple of Kali. There's a saying. <laughs> There's a saying. It's pretty low class. And that's usually associated with the tantric, tantra, ghosts and spirits. It's uh, So it may be. She considers him as a Prabhu. Yeah, well, she got so angry, right, at that time. You find in Bhagavatam, Sati didn't follow Shiva's order. She got a lot of trouble by doing that. Okay, well.